for today, for this message, I have prepared a very special ebook. Now, this is a, a study guide. I go into extreme detail about what blind spots are, how to be protected from the blind spots, to understand what the devil's up to, to understand where he came from, how he operates. It's a really an exhaustive treatment of this subject that spans my 51 years of international full-time miracle ministry. Uh, trust me, I've encountered a lot of devils in 51 years, real devils, not made up devils, uh, but some real serious demonic uh, activities around the world, especially in some of the third world and heathen countries. And uh, it's they've never stopped me from having a successful crusade. They've never stopped me from having miracles. They've tried, but I learned only early on the Holy Spirit and my mentors taught me how to take authority over the enemy. And I've con condensed that into this study guide that I want you to have. And here's how you get it. Here's the only way you get it is you send me an email, Pastor Larry at zchurch.life and say, uh, I want the ebook, <laughs> uh, or, or you could say, I want uh, the blind spot book. And if you just say blind spot, I'll know what you're talking about. And I will bounce back a link to you and you can download the ebook. It's a pretty big ebook. It'll be a reference book that you can keep from now on and study and learn all about uh, the operation of evil, the origin of evil, what the blind spots are, and how to uh, be victorious. And I'm very excited about the ebook. I'm pumped. Uh, the Holy Spirit came on me while I was writing it, uh, and I just felt the anointing of God, and I believe it's in this study guide. And I, I'm quite sure that it's going to bless you and cause you to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Everybody, if you're happy today and you love Jesus, so let's make some noise. Uh, unmute yourself. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yay. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I got to tell you, Z Team, you really blessed me today. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I think you've all caught we've all caught the same thing. We're we've caught this excitement about uh, about the whole day and about Pastor Brunel being with us. And I believe he's excited too. We chatted during the week, and uh, we've been planning this for several weeks. And it seemed like the closer we got, the more excited I got. So um, remember uh, the ebook, the blind spot, and it's yours just by sending an email. But let me tell you. I'm going to close this offer on Wednesday. So you, you better do it now if you want an ebook. Otherwise, you might forget about it or neglect it. Neglect it. Uh, after Wednesday, uh, this ebook won't be available. And now let me see what day that is. Wednesday. What day is Wednesday? Uh, it will be um, October the 9th. Is that right? Somebody help me. Yes. Yes, it's October 9th. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Hallelujah. All right. Father, I thank you right now for blessing everyone who's watching and listening on YouTube Live, Facebook Live. We thank you for the people who are online with us on the Z Church platform. And I thank you for the uh, just the privilege of sharing something so powerful today that's going to bless everyone. And I'm going to depend totally on your anointing to communicate this message that I have. And I know you're going to anoint Pastor Brunell and me at uh, during the afterglow in the Q&A. And I'm excited about it. I'm going to thank you ahead of time. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say amen. 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 All right. Have you ever wondered about the origin of evil, where it came from? You know, actually, there's a theory that circulated for centuries that God created the devil on purpose to be the agent of the evil to tempt humanity so that God could find out, you know, what kind of faith they had. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a very dangerous doctrine, and it's ludicrous. I laughed a little bit because it's just so far off kilter when it comes to Scripture. God did not create evil, and he doesn't tempt man with evil. God is a good God. Can I have an amen here? Amen. He's, he's always good. Now, let me put on my <clears throat> readers here so I won't have to strain. Um, Psalm 34 says, God is good, and that's now and forever. 
But here's a scripture I think that has to do specifically with clearing up the question, did God create evil in order to test us? And did he assign that, that uh, dirty job to Lucifer? Now, I'm going to pause here for a second. There actually are denominations who believe that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. They were both created by God at the same time. And Jesus chose good and Lucifer chose evil. That's not how this worked. <laughs> They're not brothers. Jesus is the son of God. He is God. And Lucifer, as we'll see in a moment, was an angel. Uh, and now he's a fallen angel. He's a demonized angel. So here's my scripture. James 1.17, every good gift. How many good gifts? Every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above. In other words, from heaven, coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of change. Let me tell you something. God is always good. He's light, not darkness. And every good gift comes from heaven. Now, evil is not a good gift. It's not a gift. And um, God didn't send it. The Father of lights did not send evil upon the earth. Now, I know you may think you have seen some scripture that says that, but you're going to have to go back and do a little digging into the into the tenses of the Hebrew and the Greek and find out if it was a causative sense or if it was a permissive sense. Has God permitted evil? Well, yes, because he gave human beings a free will. But is he the author of evil? No, absolutely not. Evil is confusion and God is not the author of evil. I, I should get an amen right there. Amen. 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 Now, James in James 1, 3 says, when we're, when we're tempted, and, and we all are, don't say I'm tempted by God. Now, a lot of people do say, you know, God tempted me. Well, no, 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 that's not the way it is. For God cannot, that's a very strong assertion. It's not that he just doesn't choose to, but he cannot be tempted with evil. Neither he himself tempts anyone with evil. He doesn't do it. Believe the word. It's right there on, on the book. God does not tempt us with evil. Satan is evil, uh, and, and we are tempted. But remember, the devil's the tempter, not God. So, okay, that clears that up. God is not the author of evil. Well, where did it come from then? I thought God created everything. He did. He created everything good. He created the heaven and the earth and the stars and the heavenly host, and he said it's good. God is good. Every good thing comes from the Father of lights. So God created even the devil, but at that time he wasn't the devil. He was the anointed cherub that covereth, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Praise God. Uh, John 1, 5 says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Well, Lucifer is darkness, and God is light. So God doesn't have any darkness in him. He and Lucifer is separated by uh, light and dark, and they don't mingle. There's not a gray area. Too many people think that there's a gray area, that there's little white lies and there are half-truths, and, and you know, uh, there are different degrees of uh, obedience or disobedience, you know, like uh, people get caught up on this, uh, I'm, I'm in the acceptable will of God, you know, good, perfect, and acceptable. <laughs> uh, the acceptable will means holy and a service unto God, a holy service unto God, like an acceptable sacrifice. So the will of God is good hyphen, perfect hyphen, acceptable hyphen. That's an adjective phrase. It's not three different wills. It's good will, which is also perfect and which is also ceremonially pure and holy. And so you can't say, well, I'm sort of in the will of God. Honey, you're either in the, doing the will of God or you're not doing the will of God. There's no middle ground. And the enemy knows this. And he wants people to think, well, you know, I'm okay. I'm in a gray area here. I'm not real bad. I'm not doing anything real sinful. Uh, I haven't gone too far. No, 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 no. That's a trick of the enemy. And he's got a lot of tricks. And you need to get my ebook about the blind spot to find out about all those tricks of the devil. We are not ignorant of his devices. He's got a way of doing things, and he does the same thing over and over, and keep people keep falling for the same lies and tricks over and over. Well, 
uh, my ebook is going to help you clear that up. So get that ebook. Praise the Lord. Now let's talk about how evil came into the world. Let me check my time here because I don't want to run over. We want to we want to end this session before our special Q and A starts. But how did evil come in the world if if a God couldn't didn't create it and couldn't create it? Well, we know that it came because of Lucifer. But how did Lucifer come up with evil? After all, he was created by God and he was good because God doesn't create bad stuff. He doesn't create junk. Well, let me read you a scripture. I'm going to read you one, two, three, four verses out of Ezekiel. And it's a lamentation against Lucifer. And it's kind of uh, allegorized with the king of, of uh, Tyre, Tyrus, but it's really about Lucifer. And you'll see that. And I'm going to read it to you. Um, uh, Ezekiel 28, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So listen to me. Then I'm going to go back and do a little exegesis. I'm going to explain it. Thus saith the Lord God. He's talking to the king of Tyrus, whom we know to be Lucifer himself. You sealed up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Stop right there. The devil is not stupid. The devil is very, very smart, smarter than Einstein, smarter than, well, you name it, uh, smarter than any human being, um, mortal human being who ever lived. He's not smarter than Jesus. But when it comes to comparing Lucifer to the other created beings, he was at the, the pinnacle of wisdom you don't underestimate the devil. The devil is a formidable foe. That's why we were not assigned to defeat the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. We could not Amen. have done it. Amen. Even Adam Amen. didn't do it. Even Adam, as smart as he was, and the dominion he had was no match for the devil. Adam and Eve were no match for the devil because the devil had this wisdom that God had created in him before that wisdom was corrupted. So you got to start with this premise. The devil had a mind that understood the workings of the whole universe, quantum physics and all of that. He understood it. He understood genetics and physics and, and consciousness and humanity. He understood everything. He understood how heaven worked. He understood the word, and he still quotes the word. He quoted the word to Jesus, right, on more than one occasion. Yeah. And so he was the sum total of wisdom. Was. Not anymore. He's still clever. Uh, he's he's uh, wily. Paul talked about the wiles of the devil. He's wily. Uh, that means he's clever. He's still very clever, but it's a corrupted, perverted cleverness. What used to be wisdom is now uh, just cleverness uh, on the part of the devil. Okay. And he was also uh, the sum of beauty, perfect in beauty. The devil was not a monster. He was not a horrendous, ugly creature. On the contrary, he, he was the most beautiful thing that ever that God ever created. Now stop. God didn't create Jesus. Jesus self-existed with the Father from the beginning. So Jesus was not created. He always was, and he always will be, right? Amen. Past, present, and future. So Lucifer is a created being, and he was created beautiful. Now, let me tell you, there's some beautiful things in the world and in the universe. God is an artist. He is a painter. He understands aesthetics and beauty. And he outdid himself on this cherub called Lucifer, and he made him beautiful. And we're going to go through some of the details of what he looked like. Uh, you were in the Garden of Eden of God. Now listen to this. Every precious stone was your covering. Now, stop right there. He was in the garden. Well, what did the devil look like in the garden? Well, he was, he was reptilian. The Bible calls him a serpent. The Bible calls him a dragon. He's not a human being. And this is where a lot of people err because they ascribe human characteristics to the devil. He's not human. He doesn't look human. He doesn't think human. He doesn't have human values. And you can't deal with him as you do another human. So he's not He's not uh, some guy dressed up in a red union suit with a pitchfork and horns. 
He is what is left of this supernaturally created wise and beautiful creature. Wow. So, so remember, a lot of people are looking for the devil to be ugly and to do ugly, but the devil really uh, loves beauty, he takes a lot of pride in his own beauty, part of his downfall there. And, he, and the Bible says that every precious stone was recovering. So picture a serpent or a dragon, if you want to call it that, who has scales, but instead of scales, uh, not sequins like some country western star, but jewels. He was covered not with scales, but with jewels and diamonds and, and sardis and topaz and emeralds and amethyst. Every precious jewel you can imagine was encrusted him. Now here's why. He was the light bearer in heaven. Lucifer means to bear the light. He didn't produce light. He reflected light. And all of these jewels reflected the glory of God. So you've seen rock stars and they're up on the stage and they're dressed in the shiny clothes. And, and uh, this is what entertainers do. This is what musicians do. And, and remember, Lucifer led the congregation in worship. He was the head worshiper. He had built-in drums and tabarets and, and uh, pipes. And he was a walking orchestra. When he moved, music was produced heavenly music, and the light of God hit those jewels and bounced off of him, and it was spectacular. You know that every eye in heaven was drawn to him because he was reflecting the glory of God. That's one area where he became very envious of God is because he didn't have his own light. He could only reflect the light. Now, remember, we're talking about Lucifer as he preexisted before his fall before he was cast out of heaven. Things changed after evil came into him. So let's keep reading. Is this good so far? Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. All right. Uh, he also had gold. And the workmanship, and here, here it comes to the musical instruments, the workmanship of thy tabarets, those are percussive instruments, tabarets, and of your pipes, was prepared in the day that you were created. Now, let me talk to you about some animals that produce sounds. Whales produce sounds. They're called whale sounds. Uh, and they sing. And, and uh, the, the frequency of the whale song is very low. And that means it can travel long, long distances underwater, thousands of miles. So uh, whales have built-in pipes. Uh, bullfrogs, I don't know if you've ever been to the creek or a pond and uh, big old bullfrogs are out there. And if you'll notice, they have diaphragms on the side of their cheeks up here. Some species have diaphragms. And uh, the bullfrogs are called bullfrogs because they have a bass sound. And they can produce this, not just a, a high-pitched croaking, but they can produce a percussive sound with these diaphragms. Imagine drums built in to, uh, to the devil, and those produced percussive sounds. They, they, were, they were the drums. So he had, a, he had his built-in rhythm section, and he has, had his built-in horn section. And the Bible talks about the vials or violins. He had a built-in string section. You know, we've got, we've got string sections up here in our larynx. And many animals have stream sections, and they have the ability to produce sounds. Birds produce sounds. Frogs produce sounds. Uh, crickets produce sounds. <laughs> uh, many insects, cicada, produce sounds. Uh, uh, all, of these, all of these creatures that God created, uh, many of them can produce sounds. Well, Lucifer was the archetype of that. He could produce any kind of sound at any frequency. Wow. And he could compose music. So picture this. He's going to walk out into the throne room of God in the congregation of the angels, the holy of holies and the heavenly host. And God's Shekinah glory is filling up the place. And when Lucifer walks out, the glory begins to strike him and he begins to light up and reflect the glory of God. And as he moved, music played. Every movement was a musical 
uh, expression. He didn't need a conductor. He was the conductor of worship in heaven. A lot of talent there. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of parallels between Lucifer and musicians. These musicians have power over young people. I mean, they draw a lot more people than we do to our churches, even the mega churches. I, I, I mean, some of these outdoor concerts have hundreds of thousands of people in attendance. Now, Pastor Dick Bunnell, I'll have to say this, he went on his first crusade, miracle crusade with me uh, many, many years ago when he was just starting out, saw his first miracles, had his first crowd, and, he, and God anointed him to hold miracle crusades. Well, I held miracle crusades that went all the way up to 40,000 people. But let me tell you something, back then, uh, the bishop was my disciple. You know, he increased. I, I, I Praise God, that's biblical. But uh, his last two crusades were over a million people. One of them was 1.2 million. Wow. Praise God. Wow. Yeah. So uh, these musicians have the ability to draw huge crowds. Now, it's rare that someone like Pastor Bunnell could draw that crowd. Uh, Reinhard Bonnke drew crowds. Uh, T.L. Osborne, my mentor, drew crowds. Uh I've drawn drawn crowds, but I don't I don't draw a crowd like uh, Katy Perry does, or, or like uh, what's her name, the Swift girl, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, thank you very much. Uh, but the, the these uh, these musicians are anointed. You know, uh, I think a lot of them did sell their souls to the devil. You take the Rolling Stones, who came on the scene; they were a little Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool band uh, didn't have much going for them, but but something happened, and uh, they sold their soul to the devil. And one of their first breakout songs was "Sympathy for the Devil." They sang about the devil. Wow, that's scary stuff because they're not going to live forever, and one of these days they're going to want their soul back. <laughs> you know, I, I, I pray they get get saved. Some of them already found out that that was a bad move career wise. Uh, so here again, there are some parallels between musicians and even in the church. Uh, some churches get so caught up in the music, they lose sight of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. They just become like entertainment venues, uh, uh, alternative entertainment. Instead of a worldly uh, concert, they have a spiritual concert. But there's not much difference when you look at the lights and the smoke and the sequence and, and the a big digital jumbotrons and all that stuff. There's a lot of gimmickry there to uh, kind of kind of approximate, simulate the glory of God. And there's an old saying among preachers. Because let me tell you something. Historically, we have all had trouble with our praise and worship team. That's why we're so happy with Joseph. Joseph is such a beautiful uh, Christian and submitted and committed and, and yeah. loves God and humble, walks humbly. But uh, there's an old saying among preachers, when the devil fell out of heaven, he fell right into the choir loft, <laughs> <laughs> which accounts for a lot of the confusion that happens in the, in the choir loft. One time I was, I was preaching in my own church, and, the, and I was standing near the praise, and, and uh, I always was on the platform. I was always on the platform. The Bible says, watch and pray, and the shepherd keeps watch over his sheep. So I never sat on the front row looking up at the platform. I was on the platform looking down at the people where preachers ought to be. And uh, I was on the platform, the anointing came on me, and I had a prophetic word. So I reached over and grabbed my microphone, and my music leader looked at me and he said, Pastor, we're not done yet. I said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and he was done for the next two weeks. I sat all of them down just to let them know that you're not running the show here. This is still Jesus' show. It's yeah. still his church, and, and the Holy Ghost has the leadership here. And Amen. I'm the, I'm the pastor, and I, I had to correct that. And occasionally, these talented people, they get a lot of praise and a lot of adulation, and it goes to their head. That's what happened to Lucifer. Let me check my time. Yeah, I'm doing good. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll keep going a little if you want me to. Glory. Yeah. Amen. Yes, we did. Pause. My God. <laughs> Okay, he was perfect. He was beautiful. He had wisdom. Uh, he had all this glory and light and attention, and and uh, the focus was upon him. And here's what God called him. He said, you are the anointed cherub. Now, the cherubs are 
the highest order of angels, not the archangels, the cherub are the highest order. They, they deal with the glory of God and worship in the throne room. So that puts them right up next to God. The archangels didn't have the same position that the anointed cherub had. The anointed cherub was over all the heavenly host. And he was called the anointed cherub that covers, that covereth. You picture that? Like the general covers the officers and the officers covered the enlisted men. Coverings. Praise God. Like the, the pastor covers the choir <laughs> and the associate pastor covers, you know, whoever's under him and so forth. So he was the one that covered everything. Who was Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covers and he walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. In other words, he was in the very power plant of the, the throne room of God in, in the heaven, where all the power was, where all the glory was. He liked being in the place of power. He liked walking up and down in the stones of fire. I can't even imagine. I've got imagination what the stones of fire were. Were they radioactive with God's glory? Wow. But that's where he was. And he was perfect in his ways. Did you hear me? It's the word. He was perfect, perfect, perfect. God didn't create him with flaws. In fact, it was perfection that led to his downfall, and I'll tell you why. He was perfect in all of his ways from the day that he was created until iniqui iniquity was found in him. Iniquity was not placed in him. It was found in him. Let me tell you something about evil. Evil is a corruption of good. You had to begin with good to have an evil. An evil is not something that was created out here in the nether world, in outer darkness, far away from God and heaven. Iniquity is a corruption of goodness. It's a corruption of truth. It's a corruption of the word. It's a corruption of the anointing. You have to start somewhere. Well, in the beginning was the word. So Lucifer corrupted the word or was corrupted because of his relationship with the word. I'll explain that. That's a little confusing, but I'm, I'm talking about the origin of evil. And I've come to the point where I'm going to answer the question, is how did evil get there if God didn't create it, if everything were perfect, even Lucifer was perfect? How did evil occur? Now let me glance down at my notes to see if I have to uh, omit anything. I'd hate to have to admit it. I've got a little bit of time here. Um, this is good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Let me pause. I've already given you just about everything that you need to understand this. Uh, the word of God is uh, its the most powerful thing in the universe, right? Amen. God uh, swore yes. by, his, uh, by his name above his word, but his word is forever settled in heaven. So God uh, put his authority in the word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word won't. The word is eternal. The word is indestructible. The word is eternal and powerful. God upholds all things by the word of his power. God created everything by his word. So how was Lucifer created? By the word. God spoke him into existence, the word. How was the world created? God's word. How were the heavens created? God's word. How were angels created? God's word. How were you and I made? God's word. Right? We are a manifestation of the word of God that he pronounced, released into the universe. So there's nothing, there's nothing stronger than the word of God. The Bible says we can do everything for the word and nothing against the word. 
we can't destroy the word of God. It abides forever. Are we in agreement? Amen. Amen. Okay, you have to understand this if you're going to have to understand how evil came into the world. It came into the world because you can't monkey with the word of God. You can't change the word of God. Amen. Now, I'm going some here with, somewhere with this that I have not ever heard another human being talk about. So I guess you'd have to say this is a revelation from heaven. But I believe it's right. It, back, it, it bears up with the word. And I believe that you will agree with me when you hear it. But I want you to know that you have to test everything, you know, hold up the litmus test of the word to make sure that it's true. I always say, let the word be its own commentary. So uh, you can't do anything against the word. Well, you know about the I wills of Lucifer, right? He said, I will ascend to the throne of God. I will ascend above the throne of God. I will be like God. I will be God. So here's what happened to Lucifer. He was corrupted by the multitude of his merchandise. In other words, he was, uh, he admired himself. He, he looked at himself and he thought, I'm beautiful. And he looked at what he had, his merchandise, his wisdom, his jewels, his power, his uh, authority in heaven, uh, his influence. He looked at himself and he said, wow. I'm just a shade less than God. It'd be very easy for me to go above God. It's just a step to go above God. Now, remember, Lucifer was very, very intelligent, very cerebral, very intelligent. And he began to think, I believe, I don't have to listen to this word. I can go above it. I can go beyond it. Praise the Lord. Okay. My timekeeper has just reminded me that we have 15 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to wrap this up real quickly. Huh? All right. Pastor Dick is with us. So, Pastor Dick, we're going to have about uh, 15 minutes more of Z Church, and then we're going to start with our... Uh, uh, our Q and A. So I'm I'm just kind of laying a little groundwork for for everybody, letting them know where evil came from in the first place. It's here. How did he get here? Well, Lucifer started thinking really, really deep about the building blocks of the universe, the glue that holds the universe together. God upholds all things by the power of His word. You could call it the glue that holds everything together, the glue that held Lucifer together, the glue that held his mind together. Now, what is beyond the word? What is beyond what God has said? What's out there beyond the word? And I believe that Lucifer was probing those outer limits, wondering what's beyond the word. And he was smart enough to actually look beyond the veil, look beyond reality, look beyond uh, uh, the matrix of reality and whatever was beyond that was an acid to him, and it began to fry his brain. He became undone. He was disassembled. His, his mind was broken and shattered because he looked beyond reality. He looked beyond the truthfulness of God's word. He looked into an arena that no one should have ever looked into. And he was smart enough to at least crack that veil mentally. And it caused a complete irreversible nervous breakdown. He is insane. He has lost his mind. He's clever, but he's crazy clever. He's clever, but he can't be ever what he once was. He's doomed. He's lost. He's not going to make it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, this he's is good. Not Amen. going to make it in Jesus' name. I've got to stop. I could go another five or 10 minutes. You need to get my book, uh, The Blind Spot, 
uh, you know, deception, protection, and the origin of, of evil. But we're going to move forward. We're going to do some things. We're going to have our offering. We're going to have communion. If we have time, we'll have special prayer, special announcements, and then we're going to have what we went for. At 11 o'clock, a hard stop, we're going to start a Q&A. So get ready. If you haven't joined uh, Z Church and you want to be a part of the, the you know, the uh, congregation here and ask a question, uh, go to the home, uh, home page and, uh, and click join right now. So uh, I want to say this to you about the offering. There's one person one entity, I'll call him an entity, who absolutely does not want you to give to God today, and that's the devil. Because uh, uh, giving is part and parcel of the of the gospel. We are instructed to support the kingdom. We're instructed to support those who minister the word. We're instructed to give tithes and offerings to God so he can rebuke the devourer. Well, the devil doesn't want to be rebuked by God, so he's saying, don't tithe and don't give offerings. He doesn't want you to have a harvest. He's your enemy. And when you say no to giving, you've said yes to the devil. Is that what you want to do? Well, think about it real hard. Anytime there's an offering, it's like God told Cain, sin crouches at the door, and he wants to control you. He wants to dominate you, and you've got to resist him. So resist the devil in this offering and obey God. Do exactly what God said. 10% is still 10%. A tithe is still a tithe. And your offering is being obedient to what God has instructed you to do. Prepare your offering right now and go to zchurch.life forward slash give and honor God and, and dishonor the devil through your generous tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen.